Hello everyone, welcome to the first ever episode of the Beyond the Goal podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Jeremy Walker, and yeah, it's our first show. Um, we've got uh, a very um, intriguing interview for you guys with a, a Sydney FC player. So um, before we uh, dive into that, uh, let me just explain a little bit about the show and what we're all about here. Um, yeah, so the main aim of the podcast is to connect um, Australian players, professional football players, um, or soccer players with uh, the fans, with the supporters. So we, w- we want to try and grow the A-leagues, um, the professional football leagues in Australia for both the men and women. And we want to try and do that through yeah, connecting the supporters with the personal lives um, of players. So we want to ask players more personal cre- questions so that um, the public can uh, relate better to them. Um, perhaps um, it's a player that you look up to, a player from your hometown, or a player that represents Australia. So we hope to really go beyond what happens on the pitch and um, unite and grow uh, and grow. Sorry, the Australian soccer fan base and yeah, really enlighten supporters um, on you know the great characters that we have um, in the uh, Australian game, the beautiful game. Um, and yeah, there's really been no better time to start. We've got the Socceroos um, heading to Qatar shortly to play at the uh, FIFA World Cup. Um, albeit, we do have a very tough group um, with France, the reigning champions there. In our group, um, also Denmark and Tunisia, uh, two very highly rated sides as well. But, you know, with the Australian uh, fan base, um, anything's possible. So, um, yeah, also tomorrow we have the, the massive um, Sydney derby between Sydney FC and the Western Sydney Wanderers at uh, the new Allianz Stadium, um, which looks quite spectacular, by the way. Probably one of the best stadiums in the world um, at the moment. So that's in the men's A-League uh, tomorrow night. Uh, which brings me to our first ever interview on the show um, with Sydney FC defender Connor O'Toole. So yeah, we got Connor's thoughts on uh, the massive derby match tomorrow night and um, also a bit about his personal life. And just a hint, uh, he's uh, very into the woodworking, has great woodworking skills. And um, yeah, so sit back, um, get cozy and enjoy the show. Uh, yeah, welcome everyone to the Beyond the Goal uh, podcast. Uh, Connor O'Toole joins me uh, from Sydney FC this afternoon. Uh, Connor, uh, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. No trouble. Yeah, thanks so much uh, for joining us uh, on the first edition uh, of the show. Um, yeah, Sydney Derby this weekend on, on Saturday. Um, what's uh, it feeling like in, in the training camp uh, at the moment? Um, I think Derby Weeks is always is, is tense. It's it's full of excitement because I think obviously this this year we've got the new stadium. It's it's planned to be like close to a sellout. So um, yeah, it's 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 pretty it's pretty tense. It's exciting. Um, everyone's up for it. Yeah, awesome. Obviously, Milos Nikovic going to the Wanderers. Uh, Jack Rad- Rodwell has come over from the Wanderers to Sydney FC. Has there been any talk about that in training at all amongst the boys or? Um, not really. I think the message from Steve was sort of don't let any of that sort of distract you from the from the job at hand. But um, yeah, obviously it adds a bit of spice, it adds a bit of fun to the to the whole thing. So that's good. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And um, yeah, on on the show we like to delve into uh, players' personal lives um, as much as you guys you know want to open up to. And um, I've uh, spoken to you before about a bit of woodworking uh, that you do on the side um, away from the football. So if you wanted to tell us a bit about that and the passion you have there. Uh, yeah, of course. Um, I guess it sort of started when I was up in Brisbane. Um, obviously, as a footballer, you, you, you go in and train in the morning and then you sort of have the, the afternoon off. And I was sort of, I didn't really have anything to do to fill my time or get my mind off football. So I started just doing some DIY stuff around the house. And then it sort of delved into more more sort of fine furniture kind of stuff where, you, where you're trying to do joinery and that. So it's just, it's just a hobby that sort of picked up out of nowhere. But it's, um, yeah, it's something that really helps me out off the pitch. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Um, I was reading as well. Um, did you do something for Andrew Redmayne um, uh, as well? And James Donerkey involved in something yeah, as, it was as sort well? Yeah, there's a weird three way deal where Red has had a pair of Yeezys that Donks wanted, and Red has wanted a cutting board off me. So I got paid from Donks. Donks got a pair of shoes, and Red has got a cutting board. So it, it all worked out in the end. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And um, on the music side of things, um, I know you, you previously told me you like a bit of Pink Floyd, Dire Straits, that sort of thing. Is that something you're still uh, keen for? Yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, I picked that older stuff up from from my dad. He he's a he's a big fan of both. But 
Uh, I delve into a lot of genres. I like hip hop at the moment. Obviously, you got your Aussie bands like Sticky Fingers, DMAs, that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm always I'm always on the hunt for new tunes. Yeah, awesome. Any gigs that you've been to recently that you liked, or any any coming up soon? Uh, I actually managed to get to the Tame Impala one at Kudos Bank a couple of weeks ago, which was incredible. Um, mm-hmm. He's a bit of a musical genius, so um, yeah, that, that was really good. Yeah, was any favorite Pink Floyd songs at all? Uh, probably comfortably numb, just because okay, yeah, the, yeah. the guitar solo in the middle is kind of crazy. Yeah, no, I had to ask because I'm a, a bit of a Pink Floyd uh, all right, fan yeah, myself, so <laughs> I thought I'd yeah ask you that one. Um, you spent um, a bit of your youth career in Japan. Um, just wanted to ask you what it was like growing up there as well, and uh, the the sort of lifestyle um, that that brought. So I believe it was your mum that was from japan too yeah yeah so my mom's from osaka um but the, the opportunity came up to do sort of my last three years of high school at this it wasn't really a football school but it had a football program attached and it was kind of it was it was pretty intense it was sort of like six days a week you come go to school from like eight to one and then you train from say three to six in the in the evenings and that was five days a week with the game on the weekend so um yeah in terms of like discipline you had to be you had to be on time you had to do everything perfectly because it wasn't it wasn't the standards were very high like it was just typical Japanese kind of sort of be there on time respect everyone else respect the elders that sort of stuff so I'm culturally obviously I had a bit of exposure to it prior to it but it was sort of it's still a massive shock when you're over there immersing at 24 7 so um yeah but I really enjoyed that over there yeah great awesome and um yeah, growing up as well, um, I hear a big rugby league supporter, um, South Sydney Rabbitohs. Is that correct? Yeah, so I grew up in um, in Botany, which is sort of southeast Sydney, and it's kind of, I guess it's within the heartland of that of that sort of catchment area. So, um, yeah, I grew up playing playing rugby league with with a few. I actually played with Cameron Murray, who's the captain oh, now. Okay. <laughs> so there's that sort of link. Um, but yeah, I've just been a massive fan it's something i've always been attached to because of because of the local sort of aspect of it yeah close so close to another grand final um yeah Penrith, yeah, yeah. We're, um almost yeah on top in that first half almost but then you have Penrith, yeah almost so. almost doesn't get you there <laughs> yeah yeah true um yeah exactly um also you've represented um the ollie ruse um the under australian under 23s national team um helped you know to get them to uh, the Tokyo Olympics. Um, what was it like? Yeah, being part of that that process. Yeah, that was good because that sort of Olympics process started maybe three three years before we actually qualified. So it was actually a really quite a long journey. We had lots of camps, lots of friendlies, lots of things in this. But I'd say I was involved with probably ninety percent of those camps and just being a part of that group. So, like, yeah, it was just a very at the end of it, obviously, I didn't get to go, but I felt very, I felt like I was a part of it and I played a part. So, um, yeah, it was quite rewarding. It was good, yeah. Yeah, awesome. And um, the Socceroos uh, squad has just been announced, lots of, you know, hype around the World Cup coming up. Um, what do you think of the Socceroos' chances getting out of the group stage? Obviously, we got France and Denmark um, and Tunisia as well who qualified through Africa. So it's pretty... Tough group, but will you be you know, keeping a keen eye? Red Redmayne as well, one of your teammates from Sydney is, is going to be there. Yeah, well, I've, I've played with probably half the squad there through the Oli Roos, um, through the Oli Roos stuff already. So I obviously got a lot of friends in there. But um, obviously, yeah, France, reigning world champs, it's not going to be an easy game, neither of no. the <laughs> other two. So um, I guess the only sort of thing you can go and do is go over there and just play as freely as you like. Um, but um, yeah, I couldn't tell you where we'd come. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to make any bold predictions, but yeah, it's it's what it is. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And you've been in yeah, Sydney uh, for a few years now. Um, since yeah, you stint at um, uh, Brisbane, uh, Newcastle uh, as well. Um, yeah, you, you're liking life back in Sydney. It's been a while now, but have you got any sort of favorite places uh, around the area uh, in the city? Um, any you know favorite restaurants, something like that. Uh, obviously being in Botany, um, I'm kind of close to the beaches, so I, I get down to, to Maroubra quite a fair bit. Um, 
Maruba, Clovelly around that area. And if I'd say if I had a favorite joint to go to, it'd be probably out of the blue at Clovelly. It's a nice little burger joint down there. But yeah, that's I'm just I like being in Sydney. It's where I grew up, so I'm enjoying every minute. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. And then just lastly, um, any word you have to some young aspiring footballers uh, coming coming through at the youth level, just any yeah, tips for them to make it into yeah, senior squads and yeah, professionally in the A-League like yourself? Um, I guess you've always got the old cliches of you you work hard and you do everything right. But um, I think in the long run, I think being consistent is the most important thing. I guess if you turn up every day and do do your job and make sure you do that every single time, I think people start to notice that you have a good consistent base and that that, that that's where they can always rely on you. So I think a lot of people, a lot of coaches would look for for someone they can rely on. So I think that's that's one big thing. Great, perfect, awesome. Uh, thank you, yeah, for uh, joining us on the show today. And um, yeah, all all the best for the derby on on the weekend, and best of luck uh, for the rest of the season. Easy as, thank you. Thanks.